Hello and today I'm going to be taking a look at the 1992 Action Man Duke figure. So let's take a closer look and see what he actually came with. So this obviously is a G.I. Joe Duke that has been repackaged as an Action Man um, and branded as that in the UK. So let's see what it comes with. So first off we will start with this big gun that we have here. It does have a button but unfortunately all mine have run out of batteries and they are like heat sealed together so you can't actually change the batteries in them which is very unfortunate because I would like to show you and I would like to have a function in one myself uh, but unfortunately that just the, that is just the way that it is. So here also we have a detachable knife that fits on the front. Obviously this made a sound and also we had an LED that flashed up on the front. Um, and then there's nice moulding all the way through this big ammo clip. It's a huge, huge gun, uh, a little bit too big for the hands really. Um, but still it's fine. It can only hold it in one hand due to the posability of the figure. Uh, but still that's just the way that it came back in the day. So here we have a black knife, knife should I say. Um, that also fits into a sheath that he has on his leg here. Uh, it slides in and it like, pops in the bottom there to hold it into place. I'll put that down and then so yeah this is the sheath it's textured all the way through and then it came with like a tan strap that's uh, kind of like felty uh, then if we move on to the side arm we have a holster that just opens up like that and then this is the style of gun that we get this one's actually being chewed to death which I didn't realize if you can see it I'll try and get it to focus there we go so it's that style of gun that we've got there that fits in nicely and again it's held in with a tan strap and it just pops in and you can secure it in there with the tab. So let's move on to the next thing. We have dog tags that came with the G.I. Joe ones as you can see there. We've got a G.I. Joe logo and then we also get another one if I can show you here which actually has his name on. Let's try and get it to focus one day. Come on. So it just basically says that it's Duke and then it's got a serial number, um, Conrad, Hauser, S and uh, Master Sergeant it says. Uh, that's a nice feature for them to have, always enjoyed getting those on my Action Men uh, in the original ones because obviously they don't really, didn't, they stopped doing them quite quickly. Now if we look at the rest of his outfit, we've got the helmet here which my elastic has obviously worn down over time and stretched. It does fit on his head nice and snugly so you don't need to worry too much about that. It's obviously like this sand camo that we have going out through the whole thing that's the kind of theme that we've got going on. It does have a band going around the top, sometimes these can be pulled off and also with the helmets you just have to keep an eye on because the glue inside here does come off as well. Um, so the stitching, well the fabric can start to come off and that just fits on nice and easily on there. Then with this backpack that he's got, I am actually missing a strap off mine. There would normally be a chest strap that goes across here as well just to make it a little bit more secure. If you flip it round, it's got these kind of connectors on here so they can be opened and also two pockets on the side which is very nice and then we have an elastic strap also which you can connect the gun to or other bits of equipment that the Action Man or G.I. Joe might have. Um, come through the rest of the outfit, obviously we've got a US Army, Duke and the G.I. Joe logo. More pockets here, uh, they are proper pockets so if you found something small enough you could put them in there. More pockets on here as well. Uh, then we have a pouch on the side here, I think it's just uh, elbow pads to stop them from wearing. Uh, like a real realistic uniform then we have these little buttons on the side that don't detach they're just there as decoration then we've got pockets also on the jacket uh, here as well as two on the breast so that's really really nice loads of po pockets for them to put things in then if we move down to the pants it comes with a kind of like belt here which you can tighten up yourself and then also we have the little popper on the front and also Velcro. So these were really, really good at being able to secure them onto your Action Man uh, and staying up nice and in the position that you want them to. Then, like I say, we've spoke about the straps that come along here. Come down to the pouches on the side. Again, these are functional, so you can actually put stuff in there. They're not just uh, for decoration. You can put stuff on both sides of that. Uh, then down to more stitching on the side. We come with this style of boot, which were like the original kind of Action Man G.I. Joe boots that we got in the 90s with that kind of pattern on the bottom there. So if we move on to the figure itself, if we take his helmet off, you can see here that he was actually with flocked hair, this one's in quite good condition as well uh, and the painted eyebrows, uh, the scar on the side 
And I think it's a really, really nice looking figure. It's a shame that Action Man um, didn't diversify many different face sculpts at the beginning when they first started coming out in the 90s. So it was nice to have Duke and Stalker and just a few other characters with different face moulds um, just to add to extra characters for your, your play functionality. So if we move on to articulation, this is another figure that I've got here. Um, these figures were advertised as having their own unique serial number. So that's the number of this figure. Uh, Plenty of them were released because I think near enough every kid on the street had a, a Duke or a Stalker. So um, they're not really that rare. To put them together you can just find the bits from later Action Man kits as well. I think some of the hardest stuff that you come across is either the guns, the, because these are quite unique. The uniform is quite easy to come across. And also they came with stands which is great because I love these stands. They hold the Action Man perfectly and I think it's something that Action Man missed in uh, later releases. Uh, sorry, back onto the articulation. Came with this style of body, as you can see there. So the arms come out, no uh, head articulation, just a swivel in the head. And then the arms do bend, um, but they are quite tough and you can't get them into too many poses. So trying to reach it across his chest, that's about as far as you can go. Um, no swivel in the wrist, so it's hard to hold a gun unless obviously it's out to the side. Uh, because trying to turn it round. That's about all you get from that. Like I say, no wrist articulation. Then we've got the legs, they do come out to the side, the front, and then it's these kind of rubber knees, which do bend and hold into place. It's really nice. It was good at the time, um, but it did limit posability, unfortunately. And then down to the feet, does it have feet articulation? Uh, this one doesn't, so feet articulation must be something that came later in the Action Man figures. So that was the Action Man G.I. Joe Duke. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time for more role pain reviews.